So if you watched episode one, which I hope you did, we talked about what is reward and how does it deal with the mind and the acquisition of things that we want, whether it's a taco or whether it's a trip to see the grandkids. Now, I've created two hashtags that were virtually unique. I don't know if they still are, but one of them is L-O-R-E-L-I, which is just the first two letters from the words lower reward living, more alive. The other hashtag that a lot of people ask me about is R-U-B-O-R-D. I pronounce it Ruboard. I don't really know if there's a, a better way to pronounce it or not. And people have always been trying to dissect it for years, really. Some people think that it's an airport pair because I live primarily in Chicago for four months out of the year, which is O-R-D, O-R-D, airport. That's not actually the case. R-U-B-O-R-D is a question that I ask myself before making decisions. Uh, I should ask it even more often than not, like when I get into heated discussions on social media. It stands for R, U, bitching, or ditching. R, U, B, or D. And it is the big self question for lower reward living or lower dopamine living or less addictive living or less guilty living. Bitching and ditching are the only two options that we have for giving a general description to why we do the actions and behaviors that we do. Bitching is bad. Bitching is when you complain, when you say something out of anger, when you say something emotional, when you get sad. Ditching is when you say no, and no is the ultimate low reward word. Bitching is when you get into arguments or when you get pulled into reading the media and get angry at the TV or at the screen because of something that a president or criminal or corporation or whatever has done. Ditching is when you turn off the browser because you're feeling your emotions kick in. Bitching is high reward. It's actually addictive. Ditching is low reward. It's very difficult to do. I know a lot of married guys who can't tell their wives no. One of the reasons I got into root board originally is because I was one of those guys. I was a yes man. I would get into every single argument and debate all the time. Someone would post something about kids being kidnapped in the media and I would get sad. Did I know the kids? No. Did I know the alleged kidnappers? No. So instead of just saying, you know what, has nothing to do with me, I can't even verify that it's real, I'd get into it with people. I'd get angry. I'd get emotional. I'd get sad. Somebody should do something. That's the bitching part. Nowadays, I just ditch. I say, you know what? I don't know these people. I don't know the bad guys. It has no effect on my life. I'm just going to say no. Lately, I've been blocking them. I just tell my friends, look, you're no friend of mine anymore. All you're trying to do is to screw up my life, screw up my, my high on being low reward. And I want to get rid of those people. When we think about the old slogans, the old wives' tales and myths, you usually hear something called misery loves company. That is not true at all. Be really sad for real and your friends will disappear. What really loves company is addiction, co-addiction, yelling at the screen and yelling at the blogs and the online news media. That's where all the little co-addicts gather. Joy loves company. Manufactured, neuroengineered joy. Absolutely loves to have other people involved in it. But when you're actually sad, for real, you'll see that your friends disappear. Maybe they'll placate with a meme that says, oh, here's a hug. Or maybe they'll give you a little like. Time, 27 minutes, 7 seconds. Distance, one mile, pace, 27 minutes. They don't really mean that. Again, they're just throwing media at the problem. 27 minutes, 7 seconds per mile. Forget that our lives...
are more important than the lives of anonymous third party others. It's really the ultimate form of bitching. You're yelling at a football team captain or quarterback. I don't even know the terms. You're yelling at him because he didn't make the play. Why? What has that done to your life? What has he brought to your life? He's brought joy to your life, allegedly. But it isn't just joy that's high reward addiction. It's anger. It's depression. It's sadness. We don't experience joy with our own families because it's too much work. We don't experience sadness when a flower in the garden dies because it's too much work to even go and garden. We don't experience sadness at failing to lift that heavier weight. It's too much work. What we're used to is happiness and sadness that comes from the screen or a video game or the news media on YouTube or in the newspaper. It's the ultimate form of bitching is tying our emotions of any kind polarized to anonymous third parties, brands, as you will, sports players, maybe music that gets us emotional, but we're not experiencing it in real life. And the reason that happens is because we don't have options. When I talk about bitching or ditching, what separates the two isn't the emotion. What separates the two is that the guy bitching has no options. All he has available to him is that which he's consuming right now because he needs to feel something. He turns to the media, be it social, video, news, whatever the case may be, sports. He turns to it because it's the only way for him to feel. He has no options. The man who can't say no to his family can't say no because he has no options. He's afraid. What if I anger them? What if I lose them? He can't say no to his boss and coworkers because he has no options. Are you B or D questions whether or not I have options? Do I have some way to feel love? Do I have some way to feel joy? Do I have some way to feel sadness that deals with actual people in my life mixing my labor in, taking a risk, being patient for an outcome, or do I need to feel emotions immediately, right now? The guy who's bitching all the time, he needs to feel right now. He needs, needs an answer today. He wants an argument immediately because it's too much work to be patient and loving and caring and risk-taking. He doesn't want to get a start a business because it's too much work. He'd rather just have a job where he can't say no. The man with no options. He's going to get mad because the Cubs didn't win the World Series because he has no options. He's not a winner. So he's going to put all of his emotional hope and faith and prayers into a brand that profits from him. He's the low reward opposite. He's the high reward loser. When I ask myself, am I bitching or ditching? I should do it more often. There are times when I fall to my own cravings. Maybe I want to have a burger that I know I probably shouldn't have. Uh, and I don't ask myself, what are my options? Today, I ask myself, do I really need that burger? Or would a, maybe a short two mile walk for 30, 40 minutes suffice? And I'm on that walk right now and I'm in 20 minutes or 30 minutes or so. And you know what? The desire and craving for the burger is gone. I am ditching. I said no to the burger because I had options. Go on a date. You've had women flake on you. I have. And when I was younger, it used to drive me insane. I'd get so angry. You know, I set up a date with a girl. We're going to meet at a certain place. Before text messaging, if she didn't show, that was it. After text messaging, if I send a message and she reads it and doesn't reply, well, not interested, right? Except guys will get angry about it. They'll actually get pissed off. Why? Because they don't have options. If a client of mine doesn't pay me on time, a lot of times I read on the forums, people say, how do I collect? Well, I collect by disappearing. You didn't pay me, you don't get me anymore. And the next time you need me, and you will need me, you're gonna pay a lot more 
for my time and services. That's how I've raised my prices. That's how I've become more financially solvent today than I was 30 years ago. Because I wait for the people to disrespect me. I have options. I can ditch a client, a girlfriend, even a family member who disrespects me. I can say, you know what? Time out for you for six months. Friends, time out for a year. I have options. I can ditch. I can say no. Consumers, though, are always afraid. That media addiction, all that hype about treating people with equality and people matter and everyone has value is BS. There is no possible way that you could tell me that any lives matter, that anyone is valuable. You can't have equality when 80% of the world has no value because they're rampant, mindless consumers who are bitching about everything. They watch their binge TV shows over and over again to feel emotion that they can't get out of real relationships because they're impatient children. So when you're bitching all the time, is it any wonder that the media markets to you? That it neuroengineers products for you specific to getting your emotions ramped up? Are you surprised that Facebook only shows you the posts that it knows will get you angry? And you wonder why I block people instead of hiding them? What about food? What about junk food? You know how hard it is? Someone offered me an Italian beef today, a Chicago style Italian beef. They put it in front of my face and I'm going through my regular 48 hour fast. I'm a master of the fast. I absolutely positively can avoid going to the Italian beef restaurant when I have that craving. But this guy puts a hot and oily and mushy, beautiful Italian beef sandwich in front of me and says, do you want this? And I, I considered it, I considered it, but I have options. One of the options is I'm going for a walk later. Still got a little fat on my belly that I'm not too happy with. It's not a lot. Most people would think I was crazy or orthorexic or some other BS like that. But I know how I feel when my body fat levels at the place I want to be at. So my option at the time when he threw that sandwich in front of me was to tell myself, I don't need the sandwich as much as I need to go for a walk later. So I told him, why don't we find somebody else who would eat it? Or why don't you save it for later? I know he doesn't have the willpower that I do because he's a man who can't say no. He just bitches. He's going to eat that yummy sandwich later and he's going to tell himself, holy crap, I'm so mad at myself. I made such a poor decision because I wasn't able to say no to my own cravings. Well, I didn't say no to the sandwich. I said yes for going for a walk later. Let me consume my body fat. Another aspect of bitching or ditching that a lot of people don't ponder, don't consider when they think about this topic is that the whole world is designed competitively. And it's our job to convince others of our attitude or opinion. The low reward lifestyler, guy like me, I don't really need to convince you to follow my beliefs or opinions. It's not good for me if you do. It makes my market more competitive. The reason I like to share lower reward ideals with people is because I'd like more friends who aren't gonna say, let's go get Italian beef. I'd rather have more guy friends who wanna go throw the frizzery at lunchtime. I have three in my area. I'd love to have 10 or 100. They'd rather go get the Italian beef. So one of the aspects I see with Ruboard, are you bitching or ditching, is that it gives me this delineation, this line in the sand, where I know that I'm most attracted to friendships, colleagues, peers, business partners, co-investors, recipients of my investment who are able to say no to me. My friends who could say no to me, rather than heing or hawing. I might call them up and say, you wanna go throw the dish today? And I'll just outright say no. No explanation, no excuses, outright no. You wanna go, uh, wanna go to the bar? No, I don't, that's it. No, I'm sorry, no, maybe next time, no, I'm busy, 
returning videotapes. It's none of that stuff. The man who ditches, the man who says no, will attract other people who are willing to say no too, and he won't have a problem with that. He typically tends to be higher reputation to them, more trustworthy to them, and the kind of person that you would trust to be a man of their word. Whereas the person who bitches all the time is the guy who flakes, the guy who cancels, the guy who doesn't show up, the guy who breaks promises, the guy who gets emotional when something comes up, when things change. That delineation between bitching and ditching has been consistently the only way that I've been able to find men that I can trust to have in my life. So if you've asked me or anybody else what Ruboard means, there you have it. Are you bitching or ditching? Are you a yes man? Are you an emotional sap following the headlines in anger or happiness? Or are you a guy who's willing to be patient, take some risks? If you're more of the latter, if you're the ditcher, if you're capable of saying no sometimes, this is definitely the video series for you. I'm Adam Brian Dada, and this is Lower Reward Living.